Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Um, I think most people interpret my table image similar to how the one-two guy that just called in viewed his... <laughs> okay. What, maybe... Turn his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, my, my t- this is like 2 in the morning, my table breaks, so I just move over to another table. Okay, what's the uh, game? 2-5. Two 2-5, five. Two five, uh, what, the, the thousand cap game, right? Thousand cap, right. Borgata. Dylan in this hand has 700, so 700 effective. Okay, so 2-5, thousand cap, Borgata, uh, 700 effective, okay. Uh, I'm on the table about 30 minutes, so neither one of us has very much information about each other. Okay. Um, but the villain has not been very active. Okay. Um, I open under the gun one to thirty-five over a straddle with a seven-seven. All right. So, so straddle to ten, and you're under the gun and make it thirty-five. Under the gun plus one, make it thirty-five. Okay. Which yep. is the, my opening for five ten, so sure. it seems sure. logical. Yep. Yeah. Uh, three calls, including the straddle, and villain is in the straddle. Three callers, two people in the field, two, two to your left? Yes. Okay, and the straddle calls. So already we're going to get into a bloated scenario here. I can I can already see it. So three callers, two in position, straddle calls. So the pot's like 150-ish, and we go to the flop, right? Right. Okay. Flop is 8-8 eight, eight, ace with two diamonds. 8-8 eight, eight, ace with two diamonds, okay. And it checks through. Checks through. Okay. I don't see C-bet in this. No. Four, no, right? I think that's fine. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, turn is a 7, which is kind of nice. 7x, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't put out anything back door, yeah, no had, front door. I'm not even sure if it was a spade, but it, it's no other draws. The, fr- the flush didn't come in. Correct. Okay. Uh, the straddle then leads 75. So... He's the one that's got the 700. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I decided the flat with two people behind. You got some flush draws out there. You got some straight draws out there and kind of mm-hmm. see if I can get another one in there. Yeah. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, the pot's, If you call, the pot's going to be 300, and he's going to have about 600. I mean, yeah, you're sort of kind of in a little bit of a shitty spot because doesn't – See the thing the only thing I would say about this is that it doesn't really appear like the two guys to your left have an ace all that much. I guess they could check it through. So, you know, if you raise and you get rid of an ace behind you, that sucks, but I don't know how often people are checking through an ace here. I mean, they obviously could. Um and the stack sizes are such where like if you made this like 165, remember when the guy's betting out on the turn here, he really should have like an ace or trip eights quite a bit. And if you make it like 165, I don't know if he's going to fold any of those hands. Obviously, if he has an eight in the straddle, he's very wide, right? You know, you just hope that some card comes at the end that doesn't complete the draw, and then you can raise him at the end, right? Um, right. Of course, they could be staring at pocket aces too, which, you know, kind of looks at them in the face. But let me ask you this question, like, what hands do you check the flop with and then flat the turn in this spot, in this configuration? Think about... Well, think, of, think Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not very many. Well, I mean, what's the bottom part of your opening range here from, from UTG? What, like, yeah, UTG in a full ring game. I mean, you know what... Bad Broadways, right? Like, well, I'm just saying, like, are you... You're opening... Like, are you opening, like, Ace-9... Are you opening any suited ace? Ace five suited. I'm doing ace five, ace four, and then um, ace ten up. Okay, so you might have checked some of your weaker suit, some of the bottom parts of your weaker ace x opens, right? That you would check maybe on the flop and then call, right on right. turn. Ace four, ace five, maybe ace ten, maybe even ace jack. Um, and then, you know, would you have say? Tens, jacks, queens, and kings here. Would you play this as a flat now with two people behind you? Check on the flop, obviously. Now the guy bets the turn. Would you Would you call? Yeah, likely. And not 9-10, okay. I would call as well, right? Okay, so, I mean, if you have enough hands here where 
you could possibly have a weakish hand. Think, so this is what we're trying to think about the hands that we would play with this line, then you could flat. Um, like I said, I think that you can click it up here too. I mean, I, I usually sort of defer to making those plays, but you, I think the whole purpose of this, what you're saying is you called in is, is that sometimes maybe if you breathe on the pot, these guys, I mean, it's a disaster if you raise the turn and this guy folds like ace 10, you know what I mean? Right. Like on the turn. So you have to t take all those things into consideration, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I think the turn is kind of close, whether I raise there and, and my thoughts was to uh, get it all in on the river. Obviously. Um, so did the two guys behind fold? They, they did. Yeah. Okay. So fold, fold. Okay. And the uh, river is uh, offsuit deuce. Okay. So pretty good card for you, right? And villain bets 175. All right. So this looks like an eight it, to me quite a bit, right? It's an eight or a bluff, yeah. right? So Here's where it went really bad. Yeah. My thought process was I convinced myself that. You know, he likely has an eight. There's a possibility he doesn't, but he's not going to call any any shove with okay. anything less than eight. And his logical eights are eight, nine, seven, eight, ace, eight, and you know, plus maybe eight, ten, six, eight, a few of those. Um, is he going to call me without a boat? Yeah, but only, yeah, but here's here here's where your thought process is wrong. I think is a little yeah. bit flawed, Dave. So where did he call from pre-flop? Pre-flop, he was a straddle. Okay, so you made it 35. You get two people that call in position. Coming back around, right, the pot's yeah, so one, 110. It's, there. Yeah, 110, 25 for him to call. Y your logic would be sound if, if it was from a different con configuration, right? UTG1, UTG2, UTG but, like, he's probably calling with 10-8 off, 10-8 suited. Maybe any suited 8. Like nine eight suited plus king eight suited queen eight suited jack eight suited ten eight suited ten eight off nine eight off yeah seven eight maybe even six eight off he just has a lot of eights here more than I think what you are thinking in this particular right. configuration so you know I would not chicken myself out and not raise here so he bets one seventy five did you just flat yeah I did. And yeah. that's why I called her, so you could beat me up so I don't do that again. <laughs> and what did he show down, like King 8 of Hearts or some bullshit? Um, he did, and I, whenever I do that, I always show first. And then just a really quick 10-second story is um, someone folded a boat to my flush once. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And ever, that was a couple of years ago. And ever since then, I always try to show down first to try and – that happens once every two years. It's worth it. So you think it's just right. a free roll to just show first and have the guy accidentally fold his hand, you mean? <laughs> It happens. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. In this particular spot, I might, if I was sort of torn by what your thought processes was on the river, though, I probably wouldn't fast roll over here because I would want to see um, if you were really torn, right? I'd want to see, you know, what he had. And, yeah. you know, that's not a slow roll. I mean, you call, right? The guy's going to turn it over first. So you never got to see what he had. Never got to see. Obviously, it wasn't an overboat, right? <laughs> No, um, I mean, he obviously, say he, won, he won the hand. But, yeah. I mean, that's, that's like I said, that's the thought. That's just a little kink in your thought process there. Just that, that he's, he's going to be much wider there getting a price from the straddle. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.